Well, Merry Christmas, everyone. Ready or not, Christmas is here. And in the church this year, it's, the season has seemed so rushed to me. And as it turns out, there's a very practical reason why. And it has to do with Advent. Now, Advent is a church word, and it comes from the Latin, and it literally means coming or arrival. And it is a season in the church, and it's a season that leads us into Christmas so that we prepare for the coming of Christ or to celebrate the birth of Christ. And one of our rituals, maybe you you know what this is, it's an Advent wreath. And there are four Sundays in Advent, and every Sunday the anticipation builds, and we light an additional candle until we get to a night like tonight where we finally get to light the middle candle, the white candle, which represents Christ and the light of Christ shining in the world. And the message is that the light shines, even in the darkness. In the darkness, no matter how dark it gets, it cannot extinguish it. But back to Advent. Because there are four Sundays in Advent, you would think there would be four weeks. But not necessarily. Every now and then, when Advent, because it always begins on a Sunday... When Christmas Day, well, Christmas Day always falls on December 25th. So when Christmas Day is on a Monday, try to stay with me here. When Christmas Day falls on a Monday, it makes for the shortest possible Advent. And so you're going to be doubly blessed tonight if you look at the front page of your bulletin under the date, December 24th. It says... Fourth Sunday of Advent and Christmas Eve. We're celebrating both tonight. How's that for efficiency? (laughs) You're welcome. So with a short Advent, we had to tighten up around here at this church. I mean, we had to get really creative about how we were going to include all our annual seasonal offerings. And we did something this year that we had never done before, at least not in my time here. We held our children's Christmas pageant, get this, on the first Sunday in Advent. Now, before you accuse our church of pushing the season, let me just say to you, it was a wonderful way to usher in this sacred time. And if you were here, you saw what a sight to behold that pageant was. It was amazing. I was so touched by it that I thought tonight I would share some of the highlights of our Advent Week 1 children's Christmas pageant pageant. First of all, we had a perfectly poised and pondering Mary, played by our own Lynn Murrah, and Julian Ruiz played Joseph, and we had an innkeeper because you cannot have a Christmas pageant without an innkeeper, right? And our innkeeper was our very own Millie Reeves, and when Joseph knocked on the door, She said these two words, go yonder. And then she sang in an angelic voice, away in a manger, no crib for a bed. Featured also in this pageant was a stately donkey. We had some, let's say, spirited sheep. We had a lively cow, and we had some stoic magi, and of course... Of course, we had a star. In our case, it was the Star of Davis. (laughs) And our narrators, they presented beautifully. And if you were here, you saw it for yourselves, how our angels glowed, let's say, with some uh, joyous (laughs) ho-hum. And yet, on that first Sunday in Advent, The spirit never waned, and suddenly, out of seemingly nowhere, our three-foot-tall camel, played by Henson Taylor, he made a superhero pole vault dive into the choir loft. (laughs) And by the grace of God, he came out without a scratch. And then, one of our shepherds, E.P. Crow, he nearly stole the show with his MC Hammer dance-like moves. And I think we have a video. You can check it out. (laughs) 
And although it's been said many times, many ways, it truly was here at First United Methodist Church in downtown Gulfport, one of the best Christmas pageants ever. And you can clap if you agree. <laughs> Friends, we will never know. We will never know for certain what actually happened long ago on that first Christmas. What we know is that God entered. God entered our world. God entered into our collective and vulnerable humanity. But in ways, hear this, God entered our world in ways that were completely unexpected. First, let me just share, it was an unplanned pregnancy. And this poor couple, they were left having to figure out some of the most unusual circumstances. And before they could have that hurry up, get married kind of wedding, they had to travel all the way from their hometown to Bethlehem because there was this imposed census and tax, not just on them, but on all the world. And I looked it up. The mileage from Nazareth to Bethlehem is somewhere around 90 miles to 100 miles. And that is if they didn't get lost or get off track. So I want you to imagine with me tonight, Joseph making this long journey, probably by foot. And at this point, Mary is heavily pregnant. And so this is why many nativities have her featured riding on a donkey as she makes this journey. And if this so-called census really happened, and by the way, these gospel writers aren't writing for historical fact, but theological impact. And if that really happened, you need to know, this is really important, that Bethlehem would have been super, super crowded because people would be piling in. And we're actually told in the story, according to Luke, that there's no room in the inn That's one translation. Or guest room. you got to remember, this is before Holiday Inns and all these wonderful hotels we have, right? So families would have been piling in for the census. There is no room. But I want you to remember this. When it comes to God and God's love, God makes a way. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care about the chaos. I do care, but what I'm saying... Whatever you're going through, no matter how dark this world may seem, always remember that God makes a way. When it comes to God and God's love, God always makes a way. And with that backdrop in mind, I want you to hear the promise of the gospel according to Luke one more time. While they were there, meaning Bethlehem, While they were there, the time came for Mary to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him snugly in bands of cloth, and she laid him in a manger because because there was no room elsewhere. You know, over the years, I have collected many Christmas stories some of which include Christmas pageants. And for some reason, this particular pageant keeps coming to heart and mind. It was published first in 1972 in the Guideposts Christmas Treasury. It's a personal story. It's written by a, an author and a father named Rex Knowles. And part of the story goes like this. It was the week before Christmas when this author was babysitting his four young children, which means he had locked himself away in his private study while the kids ran amok all throughout the house. And suddenly, there was a knock at the door. It was his daughter, Nancy. And she was knocking at the door where he had barricaded himself. But he opened the door, she enters in, and she says to her father, Daddy! We're about to put on a play. Would you like to see it? And this author confesses, I did not. But because of his fatherly responsibilities, he followed his daughter into the living room. And right away, 
Right away, he knew it. This was a Christmas play because at the foot of the piano stool, there was a lighted flashlight wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a shoebox. Rex, age six, had on his father's bathrobe, and in one hand he was holding up a mop. And he sat down on the piano stool, and he looked at the flashlight. And then Nancy, age 10, she took a bed sheet, and she wrapped it around her head just like this. And then she stood behind her brother Rex, and she said these words, I am Mary, this boy is Joseph. Now, traditionally, Joseph stands up while Mary sits down. But in this particular case, Mary was, was um, sitting down. She was taller than Joseph standing up. And so they thought it looked better this way. <laughs> and then Trudy, age four, came in at a full run. And she had these pillowcases hanging from each of her arms, and then she spread them wide, and she said, I am an angel. And, age eight, when she entered in, this author says, I knew right away. I knew right away that she represented one of the wise men. Because when she moved, it looked like she was riding a camel. And he adds, she was wearing my wife's high heel shoes. <laughs> and she was bedecked in all the jewelry that was available to her. And she was carrying a small pillow with three items on it. Undoubtedly, those items were gold and frankincense and myrrh. And as she undulated across the room, she then bowed to the flashlight. Then she bowed to Mary, to Joseph, to the angel, and to her father. And she said, I am all three wise men. And I bring precious gifts of gold, circumstance, and mud. (laughs) And that was all. The play was over. And this father says, I did not laugh. I prayed. Friends, the real drama, the real drama of Christmas is that God is here. This is what we proclaim this time of year, Emmanuel. God is with us. There is no place that you and I can go where God is not. And so the ancient psalmist, Psalm 139 says, where can I go from your presence? Where can I flee from your spirit? If I, make, if I, if I ascend to the heavens, God's there. If I make my bed in Sheol, meaning hell, even there God is there. If I take the wings of the morning and I settle at the farthest limits of the sea, which represents all sheer chaos, There, God's hand is there to guide us. God's right hand holds us fast. God is with us. And so you see this God of infinite and unconditional love and this God of infinite mercy meets us. Maybe not in the ways we expected, But this God meets us right where we are, especially in our human brokenness and vulnerability. But there is one condition, I hate to tell you. One condition. There's only one, and it's a very important one. And this is a metaphor, not necessarily in the Bible, but I want you to hear me tonight. God made flesh is a lot like free and well-working Wi-Fi. And we have to connect. You see, we have to make room just as God makes room for us. Don't you see? This is how God is born into the world. And so, the invitation on this fourth Sunday in Advent and Christmas Eve night is don't wait. Don't wait for the right time. Don't wait until you um, are less busy. Don't wait until you get your kids out of college. Don't wait until you finally retire. 
don't wait for the right church. Goodness knows, don't write, wait for the right minister or the right worship style or music. Don't wait until you get your acts together. And please, please, please do not wait until all the darkness of this world turns to light. Turn to God. Turn right now with all your heart, soul, and mind. Turn to God with all your gold, circumstance, and mud. And may the peace of Christ, may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ rule in your hearts. So be it, and so it is.